you know, as soon as you look at a cross section and you understand that the first layer at the bottom is the earliest layer applied, then you can kind of understand how to read the samples. So you go from, you know, at the macro examining the interiors or exteriors of the house and finding the best areas for sampling. And in that case, we're looking at the surfaces at like 10 times magnification. So we have a sense where there's paint accumulation, but we're not really sure. And you don't really know until you look at the cross sections under the microscope, if you've got all the information that you need to get a sense of a chronology or even a comparative chronology from an original element and a replacement element. So the, the flakes that have been taken in the house from different locations are first examined under low magnification, basically to sort through them and to see which ones retain the best paint chronologies. So I'm looking for paint samples that have a little bit of wood attached uh, to the paint layers and seem to be representative of the best sequences of layers. So this is, these are samples from the exterior cornice that were sent to me. And they're a little larger than I usually take, but um, the wood's so damaged that it was uh, important to get as much information as possible. So I've got a sample here that has the paint layers and the wood attached, plus the first, what we think is the deep red layer. So that just gets placed into a polyester resin cube in this microscope, in this um, very basic ice cube tray. So, the, so this is actually a pretty big sample. If you were sampling an easel painting, for example, it would be smaller than a pinhead. But for architecture, we've got a lot more leeway, uh, a lot more available material. So in this microscope, I have a visible light filter for reflected broad spectrum light. And then I have three ultraviolet light filters, which are different parts of the UV spectrum. And that allows me to look at characteristics of paints in different parts of the UV that fluoresce characteristic colors. OK, so I have this sample from the cornice under the microscope at 100 times magnification. and it's a visible light, so it's the broad spectrum. So what you'd expect to see is the full chronology of paints from the first layer attached to the wood up to the most recent paint that was applied before the cornice got covered over. So I'm using an image capture software that is coordinated with this camera, and I can send the image to the um, monitor to not only examine it, but also to decide what's the best area for um, where the most, most information survives to capture. So I don't know if you can see that, but um, I'm now sending all the information to the camera, to the monitor, and it shows the first deep red paint layer trapped in the wood. Then clearly, in this case, it's repainted white. Then there's a deep gray layer. And so we were looking for cracks and dirt and anything that might indicate exposure before the next layer is applied. And there's a lot of damage in these paint layers. And that suggests many, many years of exterior weathering. And that's good. That's what we want to see. And so I'm going to um, photograph this and capture it. So this allows me to go back and you know, compare all these images over uh, it, under different conditions and magnifications and from different locations. So it's, it's those cross sections under the microscope that give you this really powerful tool to figure out changes over time and comparisons between original surfaces and later surfaces. So I think for what Willie Graham is asking us to do, you know, we need that kind of archaeological approach. It's far more than just figuring out what color it was. It's really understanding how elements within a room relate, or how elements in one room relate to an adjacent room, how 
architectural fragments might be put back into context based on the paint chronologies. So, you know, that cross-section work which you saw is really our primary method of deciphering changes over time.